Okay, so here's a slightly harder um, example. Okay, all those other ones were um, relatively basic compared to what you probably need to be able to do for some things. Uh, part of an engineering model for a roller coaster is drawn at the right. A model passenger car of mass M arrives at point A with a speed of 0.2 meters per second. Okay, with mass M. Um, accelerates down the incline from A to B and through a vertical loop. On the model, point C is 1.2 meters above A. I mean, sorry, above B. The upper portion of the loop is circular with radius of 0.5. Okay, so it's not quite a full circle, right? It's a little bit of a teardrop shape. <clears throat> okay. Uh, suppose the car arrives at point C. Its wheels just barely lose contact with the track at that point. What is the centripetal force on the car? Okay. All right. So if we want to think about the car at point C, all right, um, it's going to have its weight acting down, okay, and then normally it would have a normal force, right, acting down also um, from the track, but it's barely loose contact, right, so that's when we're going to say that there's no normal force, so the FG is just going to equal the centripetal force, okay, so the centripetal force is just going to be, oops, let me use a capital M because that's what they're doing, centripetal force equals MG, um, I think that's all we have to put, right? Suppose the car arrived with a centripetal force in the car. Yeah, because we don't really know any numbers. We don't know the M. No, okay, that's fine. All right, so let's just say that. I think we're probably just assuming it's just the weight, okay? All right, so now if we're using um, MV squared over R and the answer to A to determine the kinetic energy at point C, okay? So if we want to think about doing a little bar chart here, okay, there's no, you know, in our LOL, there's there's no work coming in or out, right? There's no friction uh, there's nothing else pushing it. It's just kind of doing its thing. Okay, so up here, right, I would say it's going to have some kinetic and some gravitational. Okay, and then at point C, it's going to have uh, some lesser gravitational and probably faster, I guess, because it looks like it's a little bit lower. Is there anything else happening to it? No, right? Okay, so some of that... Um, gravitational potential energy from up here is going to be transferred um, to make it a little bit faster there at point C. Okay. All right. Uh, so if I'm just looking to find the kinetic energy here at point C, right, I'm going to need to know one half mv squared. Okay. So this is part B. This was A. Okay. So B, I know the kinetic energy is one half mv squared, but I'm going to need to know V. All right. Um, and I'm going to get V from here. Right, so if I know my centripetal force is mg, and that equals mv squared over r, okay, then I can see my velocity is going to be radical rg, right, um, at that top point. So if I go back over here, one half m radical rg squared, I'm going to get one half m rg will be my kinetic energy. <clears throat> okay, and I'm in terms of the right thing, so that's good. Okay, um, if the friction force acting on the car is incredibly small, right, which means we're not going to worry about thermal energy, what does the vertical distance from O to A have to be so that this happens? Okay, so we're basically looking for the height here, all right? So now we want to use our conservation of energy equation. So we'll have the initial kinetic and gravitational energies equal the final uh, kinetic and gravitational energies, okay? So one half mv squared plus mghi, one half mv final squared plus mgh final, <clears throat> okay? So remember, this is at point A, this is at point C, all right? This is what we're looking for, right? The height at point A, okay? So usually I like to switch around and solve for the variable, but in these sometimes that's just way too complicated, so then I'll just start putting some stuff in now, okay? So I'll have one half, um, well, here, let's look at this first, actually. Okay, so one thing you want to notice that they haven't given us M, right? But uh, M is in every term, okay? Which will always happen unless there's springs involved, then that one is not mass dependent, so you will have to keep it. But anything else, if there's all M's across the board, just cancel them out, okay? All right, so I'm going to get one half, oops, I'm never going to have enough room on this page. Okay, one half um, 0.2 squared 
plus 10 times hi equals 1 half, um, I guess that was the speed. Are they not giving us any? Oh, no, we can actually solve for that. <clears throat> okay. 1 half, let's actually find this now. Okay, because we do know that radius. Okay, so the velocity is, the radius is 0. 0.5 times 10. Okay, so that's going to be um, radical 5, which is what, 2 point, who knows? Oops, what am I doing? 2.24. Okay, so that would be the speed at that point C. So 2.24 squared plus 10 times 1.2 is the height there. <clears throat> okay, so now I just have to plug all this junk in. Squared. So 0 0.02, and certainly I'm going to make a math error on this so that I have to go back and redo it because that's the way it goes. Oh, yeah, see, I think I did do something wrong there. Did I? Oh, it was only 0.2. Oh, that is really slow up there. Okay, 2.51 plus 12, okay, plus 12 is 14.5 minus 0 0.02. Well, that's practically worthless <clears throat> divided by 10. Uh, 1.45, okay, which is good because that is higher, right, than it was before, but not drastically higher, okay, so that's probably right, okay, hopefully I don't make a math error, let me know if I did, uh, okay, uh, suppose the engineers, oh, this is going to be tricky, okay, um, let me stop this video here, and then I'll make a new one for D because I got to get some more space somewhere, <clears throat>